Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at graphing polynomial functions, functions whose equations are include polynomials. And we're going to do a little bit of different technology on these couple of videos, so we're going to see how this goes. I want to begin by exploring some very basic polynomial functions, just simply functions that are defined by an equation of the form f of x equal x raised to some power. And to do this, I want to share my screen and I want to um, show you a, whoop, let's see if we can get that going there. Yes, perfect. I want to show you a, a really cool technique uh, called Desmos, a site called Desmos rather, and I'm going to look at some very simple shapes. Now, you'll remember from much earlier in the semester that we graphed uh, equations of the form, for example, y equal x to the third. And it gave us this sort of wiggly shape that we saw before. I'd like to see what happens if we take that exponent and make it a little bit higher. So let me also, on top of this graph, graph y equal x to the fifth and see how they're similar. Notice that the shapes really are kind of similar. Let's zoom in and zoom out and kind of compare them a little bit. So y equal x cubed is the red one and y equal x to the fifth is the black, uh, the blue one, sorry. And I want to notice that if you are out kind of on the periphery of these graphs, that y equal x to the fifth seems to be rising or falling more dramatically. If you think about that, that makes sense. For example, if x were equal to two in either one of these equations, in y equal x cubed, if x was two, y would be eight. But if, uh, y, if x were two and y equal x to the fifth, y would be two to the fifth, that's 32. So it's going, the graph is going up much faster as the exponent gets larger. But that's actually not the entire story. Let me zoom in a little bit, just close to the origin. And I want to notice a couple things here. Notice that both of these graphs go through the point 1, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, negative 1. So those points are in common no matter what that exponent is. However, y equal x cubed, and again, that's the red graph, is not as flat towards the middle as y equal x to the fifth is. Think about that for some values of x like one half. So one half to the third power is one eighth, that's pretty small, but one half to the fifth power is one over 32, that's really small. So comparing the two graphs, they have a real similar shape, they go through some of the same points as you can see here, but y equal x to the fifth is flatter when you're near the origin and goes up more steeply as you get away from the origin. Let's go out one little farther. You can really see that. What would happen if we change that to y equal x to the seventh? y equal x to the seventh. Ah, even more so. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So you can see it between negative one and one. Notice that the as the exponent gets up, the graph it goes up, the graph gets flatter and flatter closer to the origin. But as you go away from the origin, it goes up more rapidly, more steeply. And this pattern will continue as you take the exponents higher and higher and higher. Let's do one more and be satisfied with that. Y equal X raised to the ninth even more so if you can see that. Now what do these equations have in common that their graphs are so similar? Notice that the exponents are all odd. So if you have a, a, an equation of the form y equal x to an odd power, the shape is basically the same, but it becomes more dramatic, let's say, as the exponent goes higher. What about even exponents? So let's clear out the, my graph here and start all over. We know about y equal x squared from past experience. Our old friend, the parabola, there he is right there. Uh, what if I raise the exponent on that one? What if it's another even exponent, but higher? What about x to the fourth? 
notice that again you have some points in common they're different ones negative one one zero zero one one I'm going to be using these as sort of the base points that I use to sketch a graph but notice again that the graph goes up more quickly than y equal x squared as you move away from the origin and is flatter as you're close to the origin let's look at a couple more here and see what happens let's say we have y equal x to the sixth notice that pattern continues let's go one more y equal x to the eighth even more so flatter and flatter and flatter as you approach the origin steeper and steeper as you move away from the origin but no matter what always these points isn't that interesting so if you take this observation and put it together with what we learned in an earlier part of the course about how graphs can shift or stretch or reflect based on adding in an extra couple numbers, we can do some very interesting graphs. So I'm going to unshare this screen and switch over to a different camera. that will allow me to just draw a nice graph by hand. And I'm going to try to dra draw a couple graphs that are built on what we've learned so far. So what if, for example, we were asked to graph y equal x plus four to the fourth minus five. What I would claim to observe is that the graph of this would be very, very similar to the graph of y equal x to the fourth. And we know from what we've seen so far that it would have a shape similar to y equal x squared, similar to a parabola, a little flatter towards the origin, a little more steep as you move away from it, and that there are three points you can count on. If x is negative 1, 0, or 1, if x is negative 1, y is 1, just do the calculation, x equals 0, y equals 0, x equals 1, y equals 1. That's going to give me a, ge a, a general shape, but I'm shifting the graph according to what you see in here and here. And basically, if you build on what we learned way back earlier in the course, what you do is you think first about how the graph would shift. This graph would have its vertex, so to speak, at the origin. This would tell you that you're going to shift left four and down five. So if I start at my origin and I imagine shifting one, two, three, four left, one, two, three, four, five down, one, two, three, just making sure I count, the origin of y equal x to the fourth will shift here. Then I just recreate the shape from that new origin. And what I want to focus on in my table here is not so much these specific points, but how the graph moves as I move away from the origin. Think of this point as being one left and one up from the origin. With our new origin, we would again go one left and one up. And this graph, or this point rather, would be one right, one up compared to the origin. We do the same here. And now uh, we can't be super precise, but we keep in mind that the shape kind of resembles a parabola, but it would be, it'll be flatter towards the origin and rise more steeply beyond that. So I'm just going to, just to get a sketch, try to draw, draw something that basically does that. Kind of looks like a parabola, but I'm making it flatter towards the origin and then rising more steeply beyond that, which is good enough for a, a quick sketch of that thing. Let's look at one with an odd exponent, and I hope my whole thing does not come crashing down when I do this. Oh, no, it worked out just fine. Great. And let's put more doodads in it. So let's suppose we are looking at the graph of y equal negative 2, x minus 5 to the fifth, and let's say plus 4. The graph of this, 
function would be very, very similar to the graph of y equal x to the fifth. Sorry about that. And a few key points on that. Notice we just kind of build on this idea of a few key points. Negative 1, 0, 1. The y values would be now negative 1 because it's an odd power. 0, 1. But all of these numbers do something special. So the fact that we have x minus 5 means we're going to shift 5 units to the right. And the 4 on the end means we're going to shift 4 units up. But digging into it more carefully, the minus sign, you might remember, reflects the graph over the x-axis. Oh, I worked that too high. You can't see that. Reflects over the x-axis. There, we'll cheat a little bit. And the 2 tells you something, too. The 2 tells you that you're going to stretch vertically. By a factor of 2. So what do we do with all this information? Well, you want to start by thinking about where the origin will move. What happens to the origin? The origin is ordinarily at the origin, but we are going to shift it 5 units to the right and 4 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. That puts me right there. Now, if we think about the basic graph, y equal x to the fifth, what the way to interpret these few simple points is that this point would be 1 to the left and 1 down, and this point would be 1 to the right and 1 up. But if we are reflecting over the x-axis, instead of going down, we go up. Instead of going up, we go down. And because we have a stretch factor, we're not going to go up by 1 or down by 1, but by 2. So what does that mean? So looking at negative 1, negative 1, that means that ordinarily the graph would be 1 left, 1 down from the new origin. But we're reflecting, so instead of going down, we're going to go up. And we're stretching, so instead of going up 1, we're going to go up 2. So left 1, up 2. And the 1, 1 tells you that ordinarily you would go 1 right, 1 up. But because we're reflecting, we'll go down instead of up. And because of the stretch factor, we'll go down by 2. So 1 right, 2 down. And then create from that a wiggle shape. But trying to make it look like it's really steep as you're away from the origin and then flattening out pretty dramatically as you get close to the origin, maybe more so than we would have drawn with y equal x cubed, that sort of basic wiggle shape. And obviously we're going for a sketch here, so we're not looking for perfection, just a general shape and with the origin in the right place. So I hope that's interesting, and in another video we're going to look at graphs that are even more bizarre, but I think this is a nice start.